Yo, you know what is absolutely nuts <laughs> is the fact that I'm going to be, I'm going to have been in Costa Rica now for, well, it's going to be six months. Right now it's five months and it's just crazy. It's crazy how fast time flies and I don't know where you are in the world, but do you feel like it's like some days the time just goes by really fast and then other days it's like everything just slows down and it's just so weird and then I feel like I've been sleeping more lately which I, is a good thing. I'm not going to complain about that. Sleep is amazing. But how are you? How are you doing? It's just it's nuts. And I don't go on social media. Well, I go on Instagram, but it's very hard for me <laughs> to check my Facebook. It's very rare that I go on Facebook. And my mom, um, she'll go on Facebook sometimes. And there's just so much. It's like so many people are, they have something to say. And just maybe it's just her feed but I'm sure if I were to go on mine as well I'd probably see the same sort of stuff but it's like and maybe you found that too or maybe you are finding it really difficult right now to just deal with so much of the restrictions and the self-isolation and it's like just so much stuff when is life gonna go back to how it was I don't know or is it even going to but it brought up this whole thing of just how when there's so much anger around something okay first of all anger it's like w when you're holding on to all of those negative emotions it can be more detrimental to the person who's holding on to all of those emotions because it's just a, a bad feeling right but having something like this huge pandemic happening where there's a lot of heated discussions and arguments and so much happening. I heard something last night actually that it was said that people who are really voicing their anger right now and they're really finding it hard to handle, it's not because of the pandemic, but it's those those people have had anger or things in their life that haven't been great and so it's just now that something like this has kind of brought it up I don't know if that resonates with you at all but I was like dang it, it kind of makes sense to me just seeing like so so much going on and maybe it's also too like we don't have as many distractions right now but I will say in Costa Rica, there's a little cat, a little gatito, and he has really been keeping me company. Like if I'm feeling on edge or if I'm in a bad mood, I'll just come and see what he's up to and I immediately, it just like lifts my spirit. So if you're an animal person, I'm sure you can relate if you have fur babies, cats, dogs, whatever. I really honestly think that they're amazing. But anyways, I hope you're doing great. And today we're going to be talking about really just the key to managing diabetes with, without depriving. And this is a really, it's a really interesting topic and it's a really important discussion, I would say as well, because, and I, you might be able to relate to this too, but when I think back to when I was first diagnosed growing up with type 1 diabetes, like whatever age you were diagnosed, whether it was really young or older in life, I don't think there's a better age because no matter the age, it's going to be accompanied with challenges. And the challenges for me personally was, first of all, getting diagnosed. And then I think at a young age when you're first trying to fit in when you're just you know going to school I was homeschooled for a lot of my life so then when I started going into school and I always felt kind of like the oddball out because of my disease no one else had type 1 and you're just you're kind of learning the ropes you're learning where you fit in you're trying to fit in you want to be liked and <laughs> I guess this could even be go on into our adulthood right but I think for me personally at that age it was like such a huge thing it's like and it's, I think it's just human behavior too right like we want to be liked and so I didn't really take care of my diabetes and then as a teenager it's it's just like it's harder right um so I would say and then you know you have people that are unaware of type one and 
they put type one and type two and all the diabetes into one box when it's like they're completely different disorders. And I don't even like saying the word disorder, but they're completely different in how you manage them. And so it took me a long time to really understand my body. And there was, I, I didn't really feel like I deprived myself because at a younger age, I literally did not give a fuck. I was like, I'm going to eat that. I don't even know if I'm going to test for that. I think I was, uh, my dad got so mad at me one time, I think, because, and I, I read our, like an old journal where I had written this because I don't actually remember it, but I guess I, I just wasn't testing my blood sugar and my meter had broken. And he was like, what? Like your meter is broken. Um, but it's, yeah, I think maybe it's not everyone, but I think it's normal to go through a period where you're just rebelling against the fact that you have this disease that literally at at any age really it's like you're trying to manage your own life and then you don't want to have to deal with a disease on top of that it's literally like having a small child so the number one thing to managing without depriving and living a healthy life and being able to have better control and you know it Blood sugar control is huge because you want to have a long quality life and have kids maybe one day and have grandchildren maybe one day and be able to be healthy. But it's so hard, I think, to manage type 1 without the self-awareness to do that and self-awareness isn't something that all of a sudden you're like all right I'm today I'm going to be self-aware it's like no you have to build that self-awareness and so that for me took a long time and it wasn't until I started accepting my disease that I was able to be just have the the container that was large enough to take the time and space from my day and whatever I was doing to build the awareness that was going to help me throughout the days and the weeks and help me manage things without depriving myself. Because I think a lot of the time you can either be like how I was and be like, I don't give a shit, like I'm going to do whatever. Or you can be the type of person that might have some fear around not being able to manage your disease and then having complications and so it's like at that point maybe you just are really strict or maybe you grow up and your parent like maybe at a young age your parents are afraid for you so they keep like really tight control of what you're eating and so maybe there's um more more of a chance to deprive yourself in that sense but I really do think it all comes down to awareness. Awareness is number one. And for me personally, I had to get a CGM, a continuous glucose monitor, to really build the self-awareness that I needed to help me manage my disease without depriving myself. Because then it's like I could have a, a piece of pizza. Heck, I could eat a whole pizza and then I would be able to say, okay, this is how my blood sugars are affected. This is how much insulin I gave. This is what I can do next time to make it more manageable. And you just learn, right? So it takes, it's like a learning curve. It takes time. It takes a lot of forgiveness. Um, but I also think you have to be flexible in the process because if you weren't to, if you were to deprive yourself from everything, then how would you really know how your body is going to respond to those foods or that kind of exercise or, you know, like there's so many things and sometimes it helps to keep a journal. How are you feeling this week? Are you super stressed or do you have your cycle if you're a woman? Um, there's just so many things, obviously, as you know, that can affect your blood sugars. Even when I first arrived in Costa Rica, my blood sugars were insane because it took a good month for my body to adjust to the warmer climates here. And so, yeah, they were just skyrocketing and I'm like, what the hell is going on? Um but that's really important and just understanding how things affect you and building awareness on that and so but for me it took the the acceptance part in order to actually be like hey all right i think i'm i'm ready for a cgm cuz that doesn't happen overnight either right so self awareness is huge that is one thing that 
even if it's just something small every single day that you're doing to build awareness, whether it's just tightening the reins in this, in one area, that would just be really important. Or just, you know, hey, if you're eating something new, maybe paying a little bit of special attention to that area can help a ton because it's all about getting to know your body. And then it takes, it's like the willingness to learn from your mistakes because at the end of the day, there we're all going to make mistakes and <laughs> it's not even like a failure. It's more because there's so much that you can learn from your failures. There's so much that you can learn from making a mistake or under bolusing for a certain food or over bolusing for something. There's And there's always an answer. At the end of the day, it's like, yes, this disease is so difficult to manage, but at the end of the day, there's always something that you can tie into whatever happened that will make sense so that, you know, maybe next time, maybe it's hard to remember because you're trying to remember a million things at once, but it over time, you'll just get so much better at it, right? So that is huge too. And then just understanding that, what works for Susie might not work for you. And so having forgiveness in that area too, and the willingness to try different things and take what what everyone else is saying, take what Susie's doing and not base what you're doing on that, but just take it with a great assault and be like, this might happen. This happened to Susie. So it might happen to me. And then not be afraid to try it anyways. Because I remember too, Back in the day growing up, I used to really rely on my endo and I would rely on her opinion, which if you have a really, really good medical team supporting you, it's great to do that. There's nothing wrong with it, but I never really felt super supported by my medical team as a child. I do now. I feel very fortunate that I have a really great medical team backing me up. But back then, I, I didn't feel that way. And obviously, there wasn't the technology that we have now back in, I don't know, the 2000s, right? So it it's just, um, it just, it takes time. And then I would always feel like, oh, this is, this is what my endo has prescribed me for my doses. So I have to stick to that even if it's not working. And now I'm always trying new things and I will literally go to my endo and be like, hey, this is what I tried. And then together we'll like work out a new game plan, but I'm always testing new things. And so having like, if you're first diagnosed, maybe you don't feel comfortable doing this, but I guarantee the more that you are becoming aware of your body and what affects you, and just trying little things here and there and uh, making your own adjustments and your own call because at the end of the day, you know your body better than anyone. So it's really a team effort when it comes to managing your disease. And when you do try little adjustments or be, think, hey, I wonder how this is going to help me or I wonder if this is going to make a difference and then just do it. And then if it doesn't, then you you, you learn from that, right? So not being afraid to learn from your mistakes because a lot of the time it's all just trial and error. (laughs) That's what I feel like anyways. I'm like, at the end of the day, I feel like we're all dancing this diabetes dance together and learning from our mistakes and we're just striving to be better than we were yesterday. And it's all comes down to self-awareness. And the other thing is, you know, just accepting that you are an individual. You are your own person. So whatever the masses say, it's that's what works for them. And it's great to have so much information, but it's the application process that really makes all the difference. So when you're applying different things to how you manage your diabetes, then that's how you're going to learn what works best and how you can manage your disease without depriving yourself from the things that you love and there's always an answer and I kind of compare it almost to fitness where it's like if something's not working there's always another way to make it work better for you and so it's just about getting to know your body and really learn how you can how can how you can make your management work for you instead of feeling like you're constantly hitting a wall with everything right because sometimes it can feel that way and Again, forgiveness is such a huge part of it because we're not perfect, we're human, and 
it's just it's part of part of the learning curve that we all go through. I am interrupting this episode today because I love you and if your goal is fat loss right now, then I don't want you to miss out on the opportunity to join Shredded Body for Type 1s. It's based off of my signature program, Fat Loss for Type 1s, and inside the program, you'll learn the exact steps that helped me lose over 20 pounds with type 1 diabetes and stabilize my blood sugars in the process. In order to check out the details and learn more about this program, all you need to do is go to diabeticfitnessworld.com forward slash join and I will also link to this in the show notes literally just had to turn the air con on for a second sorry about that um it's so hot in here but I had to turn it off while I'm recording so um yeah it really just comes down to managing managing without depriving just really comes down to awareness forgiveness and acceptance but number one is awareness totally and firm foremost and then being flexible with your disease not being rigid and that's also something that i i compare like fitness to me (laughs) means the same thing um because when you can learn when you can be okay with having a more flexible attitude to what you're doing it allows you it allows you to make mistakes and learn from those mistakes and again, we're not perfect. And I feel like as you get older, as you, your body changes, cause it does, you're going to be constantly learning new things. And those things that you learn are going to help you out along the way. And there's so much to learn as you know. And so just being flexible in the process and not beating yourself up and not, cause I used to beat myself up too, when I had high blood sugar or low blood sugar or if it was I was on a roller coaster you can probably relate to that but just taking it a day at a time and then instead of beating yourself up over your management just putting one step forward learning from whatever happened in that area like pinpointing it and then moving forward because we are here right now we're not in the past we can learn from all of that but we're here in the present moment and what the choices that you make right now are going to dictate what happens tomorrow and as long as you're striving to do better if you need to it's all a learning experience and i don't even know if that's the right word do better but as long as you are having building the awareness along the way and then forgiving yourself as well you are going to feel like managing becomes a lot easier. It's not like a a death sentence, you know? Like you are gonna be able to feel more in control of how you manage type one diabetes and it's it's just going to be, you're gonna feel more empowered instead of disempowered along the way because it can be really hard, especially if you have a competitive personality like I do. So I would say one thing that you can do right now if you're struggling is, just make a goal every single week or every single day, whatever it is, to try to build awareness over one area, whether it's looking at your trends more if you need to do that. Like, you know what you need to do. And for me personally, I'll give you an example. It For me, I have a tendency to rage bolus. So I really need to make a point to (laughs) stay patient and wait like 10 or 15 minutes before I give myself an injection because as soon as I see those arrows go up, I will be bolusing and then I'm going to end up with a low. And so I know that about myself, but it's so hard to kick that habit. And it just, again, it comes back to forgiving yourself and just putting one foot in forward the other, one foot in front of the other moving forward. And as long as you can build that awareness about yourself, about what what area you need to work on in order to feel more in control and have better management and be able to eat the things you love without depriving yourself and not feel so restricted, it is all possible, but it just comes down to what, how your body is affected by different things. And when I, before I had a CGM where I started, 
is I tested my blood sugar (laughs) like 20 times a day. I would test my blood sugar before my workout, before I did cardio, in the middle of cardio, after cardio, when I was lifting weights. And I learned that way how my blood sugars were affected by different types of exercise. Yes, I went through a ton of strips. Yes, it was a headache, a nightmare (laughs) with my insurance company, but then I got a CGM and it made life a lot easier. So if you can look at your trends and look at them through the lens of I'm not judging myself right now, I'm just looking at it so that I can learn how to do better and become the best version of myself or not become because I feel like you are already the best version of yourself. You don't have to become anything. It's already there. You just have to tap into it. And so I hope this episode is helpful to you, but self-awareness is huge. So where in your management right now, can you become a little bit more self-aware in order to have better management and feel more free in how you are conducting your everyday life? Thank you so much for tuning in. If you enjoyed this episode today, please subscribe. Please share it with a friend. I love you so much. Talk to you very soon.